people, this is Joy Wane. It is Ebenezer Obey in one of his classics. Of all the festivals in the world, Christmas stands out. This is because of the bundles of joy and happiness it brings to homes all over the world. In this episode, we will be celebrating Christmas with the family of a writer, poet, orator, and university don. Come with me. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Book TV, liberating the future. Sir, you have made a mark in the literary world. Would you please tell us about your childhood days, what it was like growing up? Well, my, my childhood days are just uh, ordinary. I mean, not much different from the experience of any other child growing up in Ibadan in the 1960s. I was born in 1961 uh, in the southeastern part of uh, Ibadan, that's Kudeti area. And I lived a couple of years with my grandmother in the village. And that must have contributed a great deal. My connection with my grandmother contributed a great deal to my love for performance, for poetry, and of course, in primary school and secondary school, which I attended in Ibadan City, I developed that knack for not just writing poetry, but reciting Yoruba poetry. And well, we used also to follow the masquerade when I was young, the Gugu Festival. We used to dance and follow them around the city. That's well I could remember, I mean, my first seven, eight years uh, in the battle. My joy would be to introduce more writers, to establish more literary festivals, to appear on behalf of other writers all over Nigeria and superintend in the administration of, of, uh, of, the, of our literary culture. So uh, it's more like I'm taking some kind of sabbatical. It's, it's really very surprising to me that in 2013, I was able to publish a collection of poems. But that's really not my, that's really not the type of, of work schedule that I have. Every other week, every other day, I have to write a poem. But more and more now, I have to think about figures, I have to think about chapters where I will go, I have to think about resolving crises in one state chapter or the other. And so, uh, as poets, uh, maybe I've taken some leave now. Maybe by 2015 I will, I will return and then, and then uh, continue to do my own personal work as poet. This particular poem uh, was written originally in Yoruba. I read Yoruba and then read the English translation. Uh, it's entitled King Bioro. Bene, on Benili Baba, to be Milomo. To me, 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 be me, to me, be me, to 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 me, Oron beni le baba to be ni lomo oro ni gbe ni ni yawo awon ori asi ma sha lawe ni oro oro ja oro so oro wu oro be oro la fin jagun oro la fin segun oro ti ko le gun ti gun ni wo sonso ara oro ti ko le ni ti be ni mole bi tamotiye oro ti ko lowo ti gba ni loju bi akika oro ja oro so oro wu oro be oro ja oro jo oro le oro la oro de oro da oro asina da wa ra bi ojo oro be bi oloku ile okan oro di yin oro di na oro fo yin po yin sile laarin won oro gbodo gan yin oro oro ja oro so oro wu oro be oro wi oro wo 
si oro di oro 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 bi ojo la in the barrel of words the word is splashed in father's chest panting heavily half word full hotter huge even and tiny words underground on loan like the two day old fetus you bend you tear you break you swallow as a watery jaw of unoku is it not you weep in the waist of the child i say the word is splashed in my father's nest and then the second uh, poem i'm reading is taken from my fifth collection entitled gather my blood rivers of song so i'm reading the 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 poem of the same title it's in four movements so i read one to four gather my blood rivers of song one sometimes a man gets tired of going to sea as now when the voices i hear speak nothing but shame and silence you are the sweetness of day the lovely mystery of night and the everlasting breath i want to do to you what needles of rain do to the parched earth i want to do to you what the morning sun does to butter nuggets i want to do to you what the honey bee does to the pollen in the shrub i want to hide in you and hide you in me that the world will end and come alive again and again i want to love every alphabet that spells your name i want to love every alphabet that spells your name gather my blood rivers of song book tv liberty in the future so sir as uh, the dean of the faculty of arts Could you tell us your challenges so far and um, having met young upcoming poets and artists what do you think is the future of these young bards there are two things uh, my challenge is as a dean that's that's a very political question it has to do with my own administration my style of administration the people i i work with and who work for me uh that's a whole long story uh you probably had me sometime while you were waiting even in my holiday time i was still resolving some matter that would have become a crisis so as as dean uh it's more like an academic in a in a political space you want to be the impartial judge you want to be the motivator you want to be the initiator of ideas and at the same time you also have your own life to live uh these are all the challenges but again there's a way that we can turn our challenges into our uh strengths into our triumphs that we a way we can turn our trials into triumphs we can turn our scars into our stars uh So as then I cannot wait to just finish my term next year so that I can return again to my work not only as teacher but also as as poet but then for the young for the young poets who have been coming who have been meeting either online by email by sms by connecting on facebook and twitter I think there is a lot of future you know for the Nigerian writing not only for poetry but also for prose and performance and drama uh there are lots of talents out there that are waiting to bust and we hope that with good support proactive support by government uh i believe that uh, Nigeria will continue to be the defining factor in african writing the defining factor in commonwealth writing and the defining factor in world in world literature speaking on on politics um, the elections are coming up and everyone is wondering what's going to happen in 2015 so do you have any inclinations or are we expecting your political scene 
maybe in the state or at the federal level? Well, if you follow my my Facebook uh, trail, and I try to to play kites, you know, just to make jest of your whole political system, I announced sometime in October that I want to run for the governorship seat of your state. And a lot of people believe me. Some people did not. A lot of people warned me against it. Some people also said, well, it is not your time. Wait, maybe when the political climate is better, is less toxic and so on. For me, I use that as an opportunity to let people know that this is a nation where to go into politics means to want to be tainted. To go into politics means that you want to fight uh, more like a David against the Goliath of, of this world. And that can only happen in the Bible. In these days, when David fights Goliath, Goliath will always win. So uh, I am concerned about the political development in my country, in my state, of your state. I'm concerned about how we can have proactive governance, how governance can mean for the ordinary man on the street and in the village, in the path. I'm concerned about the general health of our country because as writer, as poet, what do I do? I want to be involved. I want to be a voice for the voiceless to see how we can move on together. And that's how it is done in other, in other countries, in America and Europe, that you have to be involved. Even if I do not carry uh, a voter's card, or even if I do not carry uh, a party card, um, a political party card, I still want to make my voice to count. Uh, I'm not inclined to any of the political parties. Uh, I believe that we have political parties without ideologies. So one politician can cross from one party to another. The difference is just in the alphabets that make up the names of the party. I, I do not see that these are the people who can actually make the difference for the youth. Uh, the time will come when there will be that silent revolution of young Nigerians, those who are young in age and young at heart, who will see that you cannot just sit on the fence. You cannot just be quiet about what goes on in your country. You have to be involved. And you must speak in unison with one voice, beyond religion, beyond religious affiliations, beyond uh, uh, ethnic relations, and beyond even class relations. We need to work together for a better country. We'd like to meet your family. Okay, well, you might meet my wife. Uh, to meet you, mm -hmm. Thank you for hosting us. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is Shubomi. Okay. Uh, the baby of the house. Nice right, to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Merry Christmas. And then, Debra. Debra, come. This is Debra. Debra. It's nice Dabura. to meet you. Okay. Thank you for letting us in. Okay, and uh, this is Yombo. Yombo. Yeah. Yombo, the <laughs> eldest. Like Yombo. Yombo. Do you write? Yes. Okay, because I remember, sir, at your 50th birthday, you mentioned that um, you didn't want her to write because writers did make a lot of money. Yeah, uh, well, but what would be more like, I, I know that she has the talent, so uh, I was only trying to push her to do more writing, not just to depend on my name alone, that yes. she should just be herself and write, and uh, write less of poetry, and write more of prose, which she's doing. Uh, I'm going to publish a collection of short stories very soon. Okay. Uh, maybe she will win more awards and make more Hopefully, money. Hopefully, sir. Yes. Book TV is here to support. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much, All sir. Right, thank it you. It was nice meeting everybody. Mm. Thank, thank you. you so much, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. You have a lovely family. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.